military forces attacked Ukrainian army positions in the Donbass 82 times, according to the press service of the anti-terrorist operation headquarters. In the Donetsk sector, the occupation forces used banned 152 mm artillery systems to shell the village of Luhanska. Mortars, grenade launchers, heavy machine guns and small arms were used to shell the town of Avdiivka and several villages in the region. In the Luhansk sector, 152 mm and 122 mm artillery systems were used to shell the villages of Novotoshkivsk and Krimska. The village of Malinova came under mortar fire while grenade launchers and small arms were fired on the town of Popasna. In the Mariupol sector, the occupiers also opened fire from 152 mm and 122 mm artillery systems. At the same time, no Ukrainian soldiers have been killed or wounded in the past day, military spokesman Alexander Motuzianek said. In connection with the new spiral of Russia's aggression against Ukraine, an extraordinary meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Commission was held at the NATO headquarters in Brussels. All countries of the alliance expressed unanimous support for Ukraine, its territorial integrity and sovereignty. NATO member countries have no doubt that this is Russia and its associates who are responsible for the escalation of the situation in the security area in the Donbass. According to Ukrainian Vice Prime Minister for European and Euro-Atlantic Integration, Ivana Kolmpushtinsadze, the Allies confirmed that sanctions against Russia could be lifted only after the Minsk agreements are fully implemented. Ivana Kolmpushtinsadze comments. The Russian aggression against Ukraine remains the major challenge, not only for us, it does remain the challenge for Europe, it does remain a challenge from our perspective to the whole civilized world. Therefore, we have to really pay a serious attention to the situation there and think of resolute and uh, united response to that situation. The ceasefire is being continuously violated by Russia and its proxies, and the death toll among the Ukrainian, both military servicemen and civilians, is rising. This deterioration that we've seen in Avdiivka has actually shown how Russian forces have been using the prohibited by Minsk agreements high-caliber weapons. Ivana Klimpostansadze. According to her, the actions to de-escalate the conflict include maintaining a durable ceasefire, withdrawing Russian troops from eastern Ukraine and ensuring that the OEC could effectively monitor the 409-kilometer Ukraine-Russian border, which currently is out of Ukrainian control. In the meantime, Germany hopes to hold a meeting with Russia, Ukraine and France on the Ukraine crisis on the sidelines of the G20 summit on February 17th to give new impetus to the implementation of the Minsk ceasefire agreement, Foreign Ministry spokesman Martin Schaefer said. You are tuned to Radio Ukraine International, and we continue our news program, Ukrainian Perspective. These are strengthening partnership in the energy sector and developing cooperation within the Black Sea region of Ukraine. Greek Prime Minister Alexis Tsipras came to Ukraine for a two-day official visit to meet with the country's leadership as well as with representatives of the country's Greek community. President Petro Poroshenko expressed gratitude to the Greek leader for having accepted the invitation to visit Ukraine on the occasion of the 25th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the two countries. All this time, Ukraine and Greece have maintained a reliable and friendly partnership. The head of state expressed gratitude to Greece for a solid stand in the issue of withstanding Ukraine's territorial integrity, sovereignty and independence, condemning Russian aggression against Ukraine and non-recognizing the annexation of Crimea. According to the president, the two countries share close economic, social, cultural and interpersonal ties that will be further enhanced. President Petro Poroshenko believes that there is ample room for cooperation between the two countries.
Ми обговорили питання диверсифікації енергетичної, забезпечення в тому числі з можливим використанням термінала скрапленого газу. We have discussed the diversification of energy supply, including the possible use of LNG terminal that is to be built in Alexandropolis. We also agreed to explore further opportunities for strengthening cooperation with Greek companies in road construction projects. We are also planning to enhance cooperation in education on cultural issues and regarding the rehabilitation of Ukrainian servicemen. As you can see, the agenda of our cooperation encompassed a variety of topics, said Petro Poroshenko. In his turn, Prime Minister of Greece, Alexis Tsipras, said that his country is ready to strongly contribute to peace and stability in Ukraine. According to him, the two countries have historical ties. About 100,000 ethnic Greeks live in Ukraine, and Greece is interested in their safety, keeping in mind that some of them are living in the conflict zone in the Donbass. The Prime Minister also expressed interest in further enhancing Ukraine-Greece bilateral relations. Greece is extremely interested in development of cooperation with the Black Sea region of Ukraine due to historical links. Regions, in particular in cultural and economic aspects. And we are very keen to develop closer links with the Black Sea region, said the Greek Prime Minister. According to Foreign Minister Pavlo Klinkin, the mission of the Institute is to promote a greater awareness, understanding and will serve as a window to Ukraine for the world, as well as a platform that stimulates and facilitates intercultural exchange. Minister for Foreign Affairs of Ukraine, Pavlo Klimkin, comments. What's the mission of this institute? Our goal is to foster understanding of contemporary Ukraine, to build trust for Ukraine in the international cultural environment, to define the identity of this country, and to show what Ukraine looks like in the eyes of a common Dutch or Greek or Brazilian, what Ukraine is associated with. And of course, we want to boost the attractiveness of this country with regards to tourism or investment. The Ukrainian Institute will help to get us integrated into the global context of not just culture and arts, but science and research, education and many more, said Pavlo Klimkin. the news program Ukrainian Perspective, presented by Tetyana Makatanko and produced by Lyudmila Sadakova. This is Radio Ukraine International. For a detailed program schedule and a QSL call, International 26 Hrushatek Street 01001 Kyiv, Ukraine or email us to the following address English service at nrcu.gov.ua 
Your reports, comments, questions, remarks and music requests are welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Radio Ukraine International and its Reading Lounge. Your host is Serhina Nalisny. In this program, we continue reading of The Artist, a story written by a well-known Ukrainian poet, prose writer and artist, Taras Shevchenko. Enjoy and stay tuned. Something seemed missing. Something was lacking for my peace of mind. I went to the academy, to Karl Pavlovich's quarters, but he wasn't at home. I walked over to the riverbank road and found him standing beside an enormous sphinx and watching a small skiff loaded with laughing passengers slipping along the Neva, where the ice had already broken up, leaving a silvery runnel behind it. Were you at my studio? He asked without a preliminary greeting. No, I wasn't, I told him. Let us go. He walked in silence to his home studio. There